He brought us out of darkness and into light. He actually delivered us from the grip of Satan and from going to hell. And if that was the only thing he did was to send Jesus, that he gave his life for us. If that was the only thing he ever did for us, that would be enough to praise him from now until forever and eternity. So we have every reason to praise God and we should be doing it continually. It's what we are created to do to offer that spiritual sacrifice unto God. I want to be where God looks down on me. And he sees just incense of praise just continually rising. And if bad things happen, I'm just thanking God. And if this bad things happen, I'm just thanking God. And I pray that we can all be like that. I want to be like that more and more. This is our future destiny is to worship God. This is our current destiny, our current call to worship God. And this is the way that we see heaven opened. We see so many breakthroughs in our life. We see victories. We see prison doors open. We see battles won through this place of praise and worship to God. It's why you were made. It's why you're created. It's why I was created. And when we step into it and fulfill it, then we walk in the fullness of what God has for us. So when you go into your prayer closets, take time to praise God, enter his gates of thanksgiving, and then take time to worship God, love him, adore him. He's holy. Sacrifice your heart to him again afresh. I belong to you. I am yours. And I want to be with you. Welcome to another lesson of the Discipleship Series. Uh, today we're talking about what it means to be a kingdom of priests, to offer spiritual sacrifices to God, worship, praise, and these kind of things. So let's pray and ask God to bless this time. Lord, thank you so much for what you're doing in each one of our lives, God. I love to see what you're doing. I love to hear the testimonies of how you are moving in your people and changing people and setting people free and encouraging people. Lord, I just praise you for it. I ask for more and more. Lord, um, for this group of women here and for those listening later online, Lord, I just ask for grace to be poured out upon them, Lord, that they would see your goodness every day, Lord, that they would grow in you, that they would grow up into you in Jesus' name more and more every day. Lord, I, I ask, please, God, come speak through me, Dad. I want to give a message that's from your heart, that's not at all um, from me, but is totally from you, Lord, that would bless your people and encourage your people and grow them up in you, grow us all up in you, Lord. So please come and speak through me, Dad. I ask the Holy Spirit would speak through me and that I would stay out of the way. In Jesus' name, I praise you for what you're going to do. Help everything to be clear, Lord, and, and to make sense and to encourage the people, Lord. Help us all to be worshipers, Lord. People that rise up into the calling that we have to be priests to our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So today's message, like I said, is about being priests, uh, part of this royal priesthood. So go to Isaiah chapter 43. We're going to have a lot of verses today. So go to Isaiah chapter 43, verses 7. It says this, and this is God talking. Everyone who is called by my name, that means you, me, it says everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created, for my glory, I have formed, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. So why were we created? We were created for God's glory. That's a really important thing to know your identity, that you were created for this purpose, for his glory. So how? So then go to verse 21. It says this in the same chapter. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. So we're created for God's glory and we're created to praise God. This is what we're created for. We're created to glorify and praise God with our lives. And when we know this, then everything should change that our whole life is not about God coming and blessing us and encouraging us and uplifting us and giving us the right job and, and all these things. It's totally not the point of being in Christ. The point is for his glory, for his praise, for his namesake. And we have to shift that because in the, especially the American gospel uh, that has lost the essence or the modern Christianity, not just in America, but across the world, so much of it has lost the essence of what it means to be 
his child. What's the purpose of it? It's not so that God comes and helps us. It's so that we enter into this glorious plan that we were created for before the foundation of the world. He had this plan in mind for us to come to him and glorify him and be praise, a continual praise unto the Lord that this is our future. This is our destiny. And this is our call of our entire life is to glorify God and to praise God. So I'll read those two verses again. It was verse seven. Everyone who is called by my name, and this is God talking. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. So we're created for his glory. And verse 21, this people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. So we're created for his praise. So we're created to praise and glorify God. And none of us will ever feel satisfied. None of us will ever have abundant life, abundant joy until we step into what we were created to be. Because if we're in exactly what we were created to be, that's where all life flows. That's where all of his goodness, life, joy, peace, all of this flows when we do what we were created to do. And this is what we're created to do, to glorify God and give him praise. So let's go um, to Exodus chapter 19. So all the way back in Exodus, we find that God wanted to have a people that would be a holy people that were separated to him as priests, a people that would glorify him, a people that were separated unto him and be priests. And originally he wanted all of the Israel Israelites firstborns to be set apart for him to be his priests. So it says this in Exodus 19, go to Exodus 19, starting in verse three. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So God wants us. He brought us up on eagle's wings. He brought the Israelites, but he brought us as well up on eagle's wings. He brought us to himself so that we could be a kingdom of priests. That's what he did for Israel, right? That's what he did for us. And we're going to see that later. Um, Unfortunately, because the people sinned, that God actually shifted. He didn't make it so the firstborn of all the Israelites were the kingdom of priests. Instead, it was the Levites who became the kingdom of priests. Okay, so what was the role of the priests? The roles of the priests, if you remember, is to offer sacrifices to God. So they were to minister to God and minister to the people on behalf of God, basically, or intercede for the people. So they were to minister to God and minister to people. That's what a priest's role is. They made sacrifices. Remember that they, they killed the animals. Um, they made the sacrifices unto God. They would uh, pour that. They'd have the incense flowing up to God. They have all this ministry unto God and they would intercede for the people. Um, and then something very beautiful. If you go to second Chronicles chapter five, this was the job of the priests second chronicles verse 12 second chronicles 5 verse 12 it says this and the levites who were the singers all those of asaph and haman and judah with their sons and their brethren stood at the east end of the altar clothed in white linen having cymbals, string instruments, and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding their trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with the cloud, so that the priests could not minister. So the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. So as the priests began to fulfill their duty of worshiping God, they worshiped God with instrument, music, praise, 
they began to worship God all in unity, that that's when God's glory fell and filled the temple. That's when God's glory fell and filled the temple. So we see there's something so, so important about ministering unto God with this incredible thing of praise and worship of, of declaring for he is good for his mercy endures forever. So when they did that all in unity, then God's glory came down. So, um, we see that in the priesthood, they would minister unto God, minister to the people. And one of their ministering unto God was to play instruments and sing and worship God. That was one of the ministries of the priests. So if we go to Colossians chapter two, what does this have to do with us nowadays? If we go to Colossians chapter two, verse 15 and 17, it says this. Having dis oh, sorry, 16, starting in verse 16. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of christ so the things in the old testament the things that they would do in the old testament were a shadow of the things to come jesus said that not one not, not one jot or tittle would be passed away until all is fulfilled so in the new covenant the things that were happening in the old testament in the old covenant were fulfilled in christ in the new covenant so they were like a type and a shadow they were a picture of things to come so the Old Testament priests, that wasn't done away with. It wasn't passed away with. Now it is fulfilled in us, his people, because now the Bible says that we now take on that role of the priest, just like the Levites. We now have the role of being a priest unto God. And it's a very holy role. Um, before I, I read that part, I just want to read how the priests had to be a holy people. If you go to Leviticus chapter 21, Leviticus chapter 21 verses 6 to 8 it says this and this is talking about the Levites the priests it says they shall be holy to their God and not profane the name of their God for they shall offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God therefore they shall be holy so because their job is to minister unto God, offering the bread, for they offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God, therefore they shall be holy. They shall not take a wife who is a harlot or a defiled woman, nor shall they take a woman divorced from her husband, for the priest is holy to his God, so they couldn't marry a divorced person. Therefore, you shall consecrate him, for he offers the bread of your God. He shall be holy to you, for I, the Lord, who sanctify you, am holy. So the priest had to be a holy people. So now I want you to go to First Peter. First Peter chapter 2, verses 5 to 9. Actually, we'll start in verse four. It says this coming to him as a live as a um, coming to him as to a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a royal priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We'll stop there. So it says that we are being built up into a spiritual house, a royal, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So this is your role and my role is that we are now a priest. We are now a royal priesthood, a holy priesthood set apart to God for this purpose to offer up spiritual sacrifices to God. So everything in our life is now geared towards this understanding that I'm actually holy unto the lord that the things i do the places i go whatever i do that i belong to the lord i'm holy unto him i am actually having the role as a priest unto god so i minister to god and i minister unto people and when i do that that i'm actually offering up spiritual sacrifices unto god i'm taking the role that the priests had i'm taking it but it's a much higher level now because we have the holy spirit and instead of going to the temple and offering up 
cows and uh, I mean, sheep and goats and things. It's like now we offer up sacrifices unto God and that Jesus was our sacrifice. So we're covered by the lamb, Jesus Christ. And that we now have this whole focus of our life is to offer up spiritual sacrifices to God. So go um, to Revelation chapter one. Verse six, it says this, and he has made us kings and priests to his God. I think most of the other translations say he made us a kingdom of, of uh, priests. He made us a kingdom of priests instead of saying kings and priests as a kingdom of priests. And I think that's more accurate. So just like in the Old Testament, God said, I want to make them a kingdom of priests. You see that now we are the kingdom of priests. So the same thing where God said, remember in Exodus, where he said, I want to make them a kingdom of priests. And now he's saying that you are the kingdom of priests. So that's so important to know that you know that you're a priest unto God. That was a very, very holy, precious, incredible calling that they had. A priest was a place of, of honor because it, it was something that you were set apart unto God. And so we have to understand that we are set apart unto God and that this is our job. This is our call is to offer up sacrifices unto God. So what are these sacrifices that we're going to offer up? So if you go to Romans chapter 15, Paul tells us one example of a sacrifice to offer up. Romans chapter 15, verse 16, it says this. I'll start with verse 15. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God that I might be a minister of, Je of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So the other translation also makes it more clear that he was offering a sacrifice. It was a sacrifice unto God um, when he went and preached to the Gentiles, that that was actually like offering a sacrifice. It was like a spiritual sacrifice unto God. So when we go out and preach the gospel, that is a type of sacrifice, a type of offering unto God when we go and preach the gospel and tell others. So go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you see that us being a priest, what is the sacrifice that we're supposed to offer? It's supposed to be our bodies, a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto God. So when the priest would offer to the Lord, it had to be a, a offering without blemish it couldn't be an offering with blemish and that's a picture of jesus of course but it's this understanding that the sacrifices that we offer up to god we have to do it with a pure and holy heart with right motives this is our reasonable act of service act of service so as a priest i'm offering sacrifices unto god and i don't do it with um, imperfect motives. I don't praise God just to get it off the list. I don't go and pray just to get it off the list, just to, you know, tick it off the box. It's like, no, that's an imperfect sacrifice. I do it because of giving glory to God, wanting to do what he created me to do, wanting to love him, wanting to bless him, wanting to love others and bless others. So the things that we do, this is another reason why it can't be from a legalistic heart because that's an imperfect sacrifice being offered up to God. We have to do it with a pure, holy heart, a heart that loves God. This is our service to God, um, offering ourselves. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And it says this, don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? So part of our sacrifice unto the Lord, part of being this whole, holy priesthood is being separated from the things of the world, pure, holy, set apart before God. Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 13. It says this in verse 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share 
with such sacrifices, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So that's another thing that we see that this is part of our priestly duty is to offer the sacrifice of praise to God. So we're called to praise God, continually be praised. And the Bible says to in everything, give thanks, rejoice continually. Why is that? Because it's a sacrifice being offered up to God in the temple. There was incense. They had to keep the incense being f- flowing up to God all the time. And that has to be us. Where we're praying unceasingly. We're thanking him in everything. We're rejoicing always because that's our priestly call. That's what we were created to do. And it's not a dead, a a duty that's just dead. Like we're, we're just doing it out of our flesh, but it needs to flow from that pure motive, be a pure sacrifice unto the Lord. Uh, It says, don't forget to do good and to share for with what, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So when we're doing good to others, when we're sharing to others, that that also is a sacrifice to God. That when I, if I give something to someone, do good to someone, even speak kindly to someone in a way that is loving, that I'm actually, that's a sacrifice I'm offering up to God. That's that sweet incense being offered up to God continually. Oftentimes when they make a sacrifice unto God, it would say that it was a sweet smelling aroma unto God. So that's a picture of us that we are to be a sweet smelling aroma continually unto God, that when he looks at us, we have this pure heart. We're thanking him. We're loving him. We're praising him. That sweet smelling aroma, it's being continually offered to God. We're full of good works. We do good things for people. We, we cook them meals. We, um, maybe take care of the children or cook them meals or provide for them or whatever it is, but it's a constant stream of that sweet smelling aroma, a sacrifice unto God, that that is actually our call of our life that glorifies God. And that pleases God. It says that he is with such sacrifices for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So that's what pleases God to do good, to praise him, to worship him. So like we saw, one of the big ways to worship, I mean, to offer sacrifices to God is to praise and worship him. So what is praise? Praise and worship are different. Sometimes they can overlap, but they're two different things. So let's talk about what praise is. If this is our call of our life, then we better know what praise is and how to praise God. So go to um, Psalm chapter 100. Starting in verse one, we'll just read the whole thing. Make a, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. So this whole Psalm is a joyful praise unto God. This is a sacrifice unto God, a holy and acceptable sacrifice unto God. He says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. So we see that praise is not about singing. It's not just about singing, though singing is definitely one huge way we praise God. But he's talking about making a shout to the Lord. He's saying, serve the Lord with gladness, right? Then he says, come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So we go before him with gladness, with singing, with shouting, with rejoicing. And it says we enter his courts with praise. And so this is such an incredible thing. When the body of Christ is unified in this, in praising God and praising, like I said, is different than worshiping. Praising, a lot of times it'll involve, uh, like you said, shouting. There's verses that talk about um, dancing. It's this rejoicing. It's this gladness in God, this thanking God, a praise, praising God together, clapping our hands, dancing, delighting, rejoicing in who God is. That's praise. And that's actually what we were created to do. This is one of the reasons we were made is to praise God. And yet it's unfortunate that many churches have missed praise. And I think a lot of times the reason that Christians Um, don't have a lot of joy a lot of times is because they don't know 
They haven't done this to praise God, to rejoice in him, to offer up Thanksgiving because he's good, to just tell him how good he is, to just thank him for all he's doing, to have this thankful heart, this rejoicing time, whether you're alone or with a body, either one, it is the most joy. It brings so much joy in your life. If you can daily make this a habit to learn to praise him, to learn to thank him and rejoice in him, make a joyful shout to the Lord. Because when we do this, there's something in us that just fills and overflows with more and more joy. So when we step out and start to do it, sometimes it might be hard, like maybe you don't feel that joy in your heart. But if you continue pressing in to praise God, there's a point where God will pour out his joy upon you and you'll have so much joy able to praise him. And so we're called even to praise him if things are going bad, even if, if there's trials going on, even if we don't feel like it, even if we don't want to, if we will start to praise him, that there's a shift that happens in us, because this is what we are created to do is to praise God, that suddenly that joy comes in us and overflows. And I think, like I said, a lot of the reasons why people, a lot of Christians don't have a lot of joy. They don't have a lot of uh, happiness and joy and their faces are very, very solemn and things is because they're not doing what it's saying. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands, right? And it says here, we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So for your prayer times, one of an amazing way to start prayer time. And again, we'd be led by the Holy Spirit. It's not a legalistic set that we have to do every day. But one amazing way to start your prayer times is to start with thanksgiving, entering his courts with praise. So coming in and entering it with just thanksgiving and praise and being thankful to him to bless his name. So entering it with praise. So when you start your prayer time, when you start your time with the Lord, um, when a, whether it's a gathering of believers or whatever it is, when we start with praise, there's something very, very powerful. It says, come before his presence with, with singing. So we come before him with praise, whether it's shouting, rejoicing, dancing, singing, instruments, all these things, even if there's no instruments, just to praise him and be thankful to him that there's something very, very powerful in that because that's what we were created to do. Um, so, so how do we pray? So let's go to um, First Chronicles 16.31. To thirty three. First Chronicles sixteen thirty one to thirty three. It says this Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad, and let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the sea roar all its fullness, let the field rejoice, and all that is in it. Then the trees of the wood shall rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. So even nature, all of nature is praising God, rejoicing in God. Let the heavens rejoice, right? The sea, it talks about the field, the sea, the trees. Coming before the Lord, it praise, rejoicing, thankfulness. So when we come in and fulfill our call, see, all of nature is made to glorify God, right? So it's fulfilling its call if it's glorifying God. We have to fulfill our call, which is also to glorify God. So we just join in with all of nature to join into the call of our life, which is to praise God. So we have to learn to begin to praise God. And it's a habit. It's a habit that you make. But let's go to Psalm 138. Psalm 138, 1. David says this, I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. So we see that David is praising God with his whole heart. It says, I will praise you with my whole heart. So that has to be us when we come to God. Our whole heart has to be for praising God, not just a little bit, not just because we don't feel like it. As you begin to praise God, let your whole heart, let everything in you begin to praise God. I love to praise God. Um, sometimes I love to dance and twirl 
while I'm praising God. And sometimes it's such an incredible, spiritual, powerful experience where I feel like the joy. It's almost like that oil of gladness gets poured over my head. And it's just like, whoa, and I just feel his presence and the joy and the communion with God. And it's incredible. There are times where his presence just comes in the room and it's like the heavens have opened above me. And I'm like, wow. And um, many beautiful experiences in my life come from praising God, worshiping God. The times where I praise God every day are the times where I am so filled with joy all throughout the day, basically just filled with joy just by starting the day, praising and worshiping God. Um, it's a, it's a thing that we were created to do and it'll bring you so much joy. Um, but more importantly, it'll bless God. It'll truly bless God that his daughters are saying, his sons and daughters are saying, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to do this because he's good because he's worthy. And remember, look there when he said this, David said, um, so why is he praising God? It says this in the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. So David, he would remember the good things that God has done and use that to praise God. So if you're like, man, I don't know what to say in my praise, you know, remember the good things God has done. When I was reading through the old Testament with you guys, um, I, uh, was, or listening to it, I was done for the day. And I just was so overwhelmed with just praise. Cause I was like, God is so good. Like, look how he just would defeat the enemies before the Israelites. Look how he would take care of his people. Look, how he do this and this and this. And I started to sing and sing and sing. And I think it was the Holy spirit really singing with me or through me. And it was this powerful experience where I started to sing what God had done. Like he had delivered his people. He had, he had taken Abraham out and then brought all the way through and then um, rose up Joseph. And then he um, delivered his people out of Egypt. And when they came to the Red Sea, what did they do? And it was just this, just kept singing these praises to God, reminding him, telling him how wonderful he is that he could, that he did all of that. And then just, it was such a blessing for me to remember if God does that for his people, man, like what can stand against us? What can stand against us? If God is for us, he is so wonderful. So remembering the good things that he's done in our life, that he, the, the biggest thing is that he saved us. He brought us out of darkness and into light. He actually delivered us from the grip of Satan and from going to hell. And if that was the only thing he did was to send Jesus, that he gave his life for us. If that was the only thing he ever did for us, that would be enough to praise him from now until forever and eternity. So we have every reason to praise God and we should be doing it continually. It's what we are created to do to offer that spiritual sacrifice unto God. I want to be where God looks down on me. And he sees just incense of praise, just continually rising. And if bad things happen, I'm just thanking God. And if this bad things happen, I'm just thanking God. And I pray that we can all be like that. I want to be like that more and more where I'm continually lifting up praises to God. So God help us to do that. And the thing that'll help us is there's also, um, you know, beautiful praise songs that we have so much access to all these praise songs online, uh, on Spotify or YouTube or whatever, free access to thousands and thousands and thousands of beautiful songs of praise, even old hymns, just all this beautiful music that we can praise God every day. There's no excuse for us and we don't even need music to do it, but it's a blessing also to have music. So let's go to, um, Psalm 103.1. This is all still just talking about praise. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And it just goes on and on, like talking about how good God is. But he says that in the first line, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. So when we're going to praise God, we need to praise God with all that's within us, not being distracted. Um, sometimes the mind wants to wander or do all these things, but focus on bringing all that's within you into this place of oneness to bless his name. It says all, all that is within me, bless his holy name to come to a place of choosing to have no distraction, just to focus and continue to bless God. 
for some people, it's a struggle at the beginning, right? But if you continue in it, if you just continue, press through, there's a point where it shifts, where you just begin to flow with praises unto God. And it's like his presence comes down or the, con the connection happens. I don't know what it is, but there's a shift that happens where it becomes this glorious thing. And then you don't want to stop praising. You could just praise and praise and praise and praise and praise because it's what you're created to do. Um, so go to Habakkuk chapter three. It goes Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. So this is so important. Even when the, the bad things happen in life, even if bad things happen in life, we still should praise the Lord. It says this in verse 17 and 18. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high heels, hills, to the, <laughs> on my high hill, to the chief musician with my string instruments. So even if, this person is talking about having no food. That's like a death sentence. So even if you have nothing left, no food at all, he says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And only by God's grace can we do this. And so leaning onto God's grace, even if everything seems to fall apart, choose to thank him, to rejoice in him, to praise him. And he will strengthen you. It says the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high hills. <laughs> so let's go to um, Acts 16. Another example of rejoicing, praising God in the midst of trial. Verse 25. So they were thrown into prison and then verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. So they were praising God. They were singing hymns to God. They were reminding themselves of God's faithfulness, his goodness, rejoicing in God. It says they were singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that found the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. So this is an incredible story of a time where they're just praying and singing praises to God, singing hymns to God. And boom, God did this miracle to set them free. But this is a prophetic symbol to show us the power of praise and worshiping God, being at peace in the midst of trials, that this is where breakthrough comes. This is where the prison doors were open, that even if their body was chained, even if their body was chained, their spirit was free. They were rejoicing in God, right? So no matter what happens in our life, even if we're imprisoned, I remember when I was in college, I remember um, reading a book. I think it was someone in the concentration camps and he talked about that. I, I wish I could remember which book it was, but he talked about that, how he was in the midst of the concentration camps and they had his body in captivity and he had to go through horrible, horrible labor, freezing cold, horrific conditions, very little food, starving to death. And yet, though his body was captive, his spirit was free and he would have so much joy and so much peace in the midst of such horrible, horrible suffering and people would not be able to understand it. They're like, how is that possible? And it's a bright, bright light, right? So through praise, through worship, through thanking God, we can be in a place and through faith, we can be in a place that no matter what happens to our body, our physical body, maybe it's chained up, but our spirit is never chained. We can still rejoice to God and thank him and have joy and peace in every single trial. Praise God. So that's what opens prison stores. Go to Second Chronicles chapter 20. So God's armies 
were about to be to go to battle and they were about to be in trouble and god had a plan he had a, a way for them to gain victory and again this is a true story that happened but it's a prophetic thing to show us how to gain victory over the enemy let's read verse 16 and 17 so this is what god was telling them what to do against their enemies he said tomorrow go down against them they will surely come up by the ascent of ziz and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of israel you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. So then, this is what happened. So, and when he had consulted, this is verse 21, with the people, 21, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated. So God had a plan and his plan was, if you want to defeat the enemy, send out the praisers, send out the people that'll sing to me and that he would fight the battle for them. And he did, he gave them a big victory. So they didn't have to even have to fight. All they had to do was praise God. And that's a symbol of our life in Christ. That if we will choose to do this, no matter what battle we come across, if we will choose to praise him, if we'll choose to thank him and rejoice in him. For he said, praise the Lord for his mercy and do us forever. That faith, that trust that the battle is defeated before us again and again. Remember, Jesus said, with faith, we move the mountain. This is the same idea with faith and praise. That's that faith that says, I trust in my God. I put my faith in him that that's how the battles are won. So that's praising God. But what about worshiping God? So worship is different. Praise is like Thanksgiving, rejoicing, um, thanking, and singing, um, maybe dancing, instruments. This is praise. Worship is something different. In the Bible, we see that worship is connected with bowing down. It's also a lot of times connected with sacrifices when they would go up onto the high hills and they would sacrifice to God or they'd sacrifice um, unto God. That was their worship. They would worship God. They bow before God and worship him. So let's go to Psalms chapter 95, verse six. So worship has to do with a bowing down. And it's not just a physical bowing down. It's a bowing down with our hearts. We can worship God without bowing down, but our hearts, if we really want to worship our hearts, always are bowed down before God. It's a place of reverence. So we're no longer um, dancing and twirling and singing in praise. We shift to a place of worship, which is about, it's this holy adoration of God, this bowing of our hearts to God, this reverence to God. And this is also our, our sacrifice unto God. So Psalm 95 verse six, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. So he says, let's worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. So worship is something where we go into this place of bowing down. Some people might lay down. It doesn't have to be physical bowing down. You can still worship even with your standing with, with your hands lifted high. But this bowing down of your heart to say, you are holy. You are reverent. You are mighty to be praised. So it's a different. The other one is thanking God, rejoicing, singing. This one is reverence still before God, bowing before God. Um, so go to Genesis chapter 24. You see examples of this. Again, people bowing down in worship. Both of them, we can praise his holiness and we can worship his holiness. And they overlap, but there's a distinction there. So Genesis chapter 24. Verse 26, it says this. Sorry. Um, then the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. So again, we see that it's the bowing down of our heads. Uh, verse 48, it says, And I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has led me in the way of truth to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. 
So all through the Old Testament, you see those examples, but bowing yourself before the Lord, bowing your heart before the Lord. So worship um, also has this element on it. If you go to Psalm 99, verse 9. Oh, Psalm 99, verse 9. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. So it's about exalting him, worshiping him because he's holy. And it says to worship at his holy hill. So in this, we find something very important about worship. We find something very important about worship. So worship is done on his holy hill. What does that mean? So if you go to Psalm chapter 24, we find out more. Starting in verse 3, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord. So now it's talking about this place where we're supposed to worship God, worship on his holy hill. Now it's going to tell us who is allowed even there. Who are the people who can actually worship? Who can go onto that holy hill, right? It says this, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. So that place of worship where we're supposed to go onto that holy hill, entering into this place, we cannot do it without clean hands and a pure heart. See, the Bible says that God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and truth. God is looking for those who will go to that place, the holy hill, that place where he is, this holy place and truly worship him but we can't do it without clean hands and a pure heart we have not lifted our soul up to an idol right so this is so important to know um many people go into worship god and they say they're worshiping god like at church and different places and they've been watching you know junk on netflix and soap operas or all this entertainment stuff that's feeding their flesh has sin it's sinful and all this stuff or they're arguing with their family right before church in a sinful way and all these things and then they come and they want to come to this holy hill of god and they want to worship god but what they're lifting up to god is not clean hands it's not clean hands and a pure heart right it's hands that have rot it's flesh that they're rising up to God. And so it's so important to know that when we go to worship God, we need to have clean hands and a pure heart. Our whole life is to be worshiped. So since this is our whole ministry is to be a priest before God, we have to understand that there's, we have to separate ourselves from those things of the world, the things that are, um, would tarnish our hands and make our hearts compromised, Right. So to push away from all those things so that we can become those people that worship God, that go ascend to his holy hill, to worship the Lord, to offer spiritual sacrifices. Go to Psalm 96, verse 7. We'll read, uh, yeah, starting in verse 7. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. So we're called to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and to tremble before him all the earth. So worshiping again has to do with that reverence, that holy reverence that we come before God. And it says to bring an offering. So what is our offering that we're bringing before God in worship is we're bringing our life. So true worship has to do with laying down our life before God. And so, so often worship will be like this, like, Lord, 
you are mighty, you are holy, you are good, and I give myself to you. That's what true worship is, is laying down our stuff. I give myself. My hands are yours. My feet are yours. My heart is yours. My life is yours. And we do that. We bring it back to God again and again. All of me is yours. All of me is yours. That is worship. That's the kind of worship that God wants from his people. So go to um, John. We'll just read that verse. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. So when we come to worship God, we come to worship God, we're in Christ, right? Because those were born of God. Those that are listening that are born of God were in Christ already. But we have to come in that place of spirit and truth with all of us in us, everything in us, with this pure heart, clean hands to lay ourselves down before God and to say, I worship you with everything in me. All of me belongs to you, Lord. And we do that every day. This is our reasonable act of worship. This is our sacrifice before the Lord. He's, the Bible says he's looking for those who will worship him that way in spirit and in truth, not with pretense, not with their own agenda, but with pure, humble hearts in spirit and in truth, like children. So um, this is what you were created for. This is what I'm created for. And God is actively looking across the earth for people who will worship him in this way. So Psalm 51, let's go to Psalm 51. This is how we need to worship the Lord again. Psalm 51. Verse 17, it says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. So what God is wanting is that broken, contrite heart that is like that woman who broke the alabaster flask at the feet of Jesus. She broke that's her worship, gave everything to the Lord. She didn't just pour a little bit. She gave everything to the Lord, right? That's what he's looking for, a broken spirit, a contrite heart, a humble heart like a child that will come before him and lay there all before him. Very, very simple. That's all really worship is, is somebody coming for him saying, you are holy, you are good, and I belong to you. I give myself to you. That's true worship, a broken and contrite heart. So why... Why is worship so important? Why were we created to do this? Um, worship is something that's not physical. Worship is something spiritual. Even singing is something spiritual. There's something very spiritual about singing, about worship. So if you remember the story of David, David would come to Saul when Saul had a spirit, uh, um, a distressing spirit upon him, and David would play the harp, and that distressing spirit would leave. Why would it do that? Because there's something spiritual about music. And there's something spiritual about worship, about praise, about music. All these things are spiritual. And we don't really understand that until we learn about what's going on in heaven. So let's go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 4. This is why worship is spiritual. It's because this is the atmosphere of heaven. This is where... In heaven, they're continually worshiping God, and they have been continually worshiping God, right? In heaven, they're continually praising God. So when we're praising God on earth, we're joining with heaven in the praise of God, and it's something incredibly spiritual. It opens the heavens, joins heaven and earth, because in heaven, they're continually worshiping, praising God. When we're worshiping, praising God, there's a joining that happens between us and heaven, Heaven, the atmosphere of heaven is worship, continual worship, continual praise. So let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. It says this. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they did not know rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. 
Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. So you see that this right now is happening in heaven. It says they're doing it day and night. So right now in heaven, there are creatures before the Lord. It says four living creatures. And they're saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty. So when we, and, and then you have the elders, right? The 24 elders, they fall down before him and they lay down their crowns and they're worshiping him. So this is what's happening in heaven. When we're down here and we're also laying down our crowns, we're also laying down our lives. We're laying it down and we're worshiping and we're saying, holy, holy, holy. There's the connection between heaven and earth. And I felt this in my life. When you cry out, holy, 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 begin to praise God like this with your heart laid down. Your life lay down, you cry out, holy, holy, holy. There's something spiritual that happens where God's glory comes down. You're joining with heaven and you're opening the heavens. And there's something extremely powerful that takes place. You're joining with heaven to praise God. So this is something spiritual. Praise and worship is something spiritual. You're joining in with everything. It's already going on in heaven, but we have to enter in and we enter in by faith. And like I told you guys before, I like to, um, when I'm worshiping or praying or whatever it is, I like to picture things in my mind because it helps my whole being, all that is inside me be focused. Like, like uh, we read in worth David saying that he praises with all that's within him. So I like to picture myself before the throne of God and that, that there's all the saints around, you know, and we're all crying out to God and praising him and worshiping him. And when I do that, it's like everything within me is all in that place of oneness to worship God. Nothing is distracted and here and here and here. My eyes aren't distracted. My mind isn't distracted. I'm focused. And I can see myself there by faith. I feel myself there by faith. And then it's like, something shifts and it's some of the most incredible experiences of my life are through that place of worship where you're just nothing to distract just this oneness and it's like heaven opens and um the atmosphere of the room changes and and when you do it with a group of people that's so amazing i love worshiping with this community near here it's like when people are praising god and worshiping god and we're all in unity and it's like you feel the holy spirit he starts to flow almost like wind across the crowd and, and people suddenly begin to lift their hands all at once because they all feel the Holy Spirit coming and flowing like wind. And all of us feel the, the presence of God. Like I talk about, I feel that electricity, that presence of God rising up and we all put our hands up. Nobody tells us to stand up at the same time. Nobody tells us to sit down or stand up like in a normal church service. They have to say, okay, now stand up for this song. Okay, now sit for this song. And it's like scattered, you know, but with this group so often, it's like this unity where so many of the people all stand up at once when the Holy Spirit breathes and flows down. And then we feel that and we all lift our hands. I shouldn't say all, but you know, most of us, we all lift our hands before God. And uh, it's really powerful when we're all doing it in unity, but it doesn't, you can do it on your own, praising and worshiping God on your own and still heaven will open and still the glory of God will come down. And still it's the atmosphere of heaven will come down into wherever you're at. It's incredible. And I can testify to it. I felt it. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Okay. So Revelation chapter 7. We'll read a few more of these. Revelation chapter 7, 9 and 10. It says this. And after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. Amazing. And crying out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. So he's looking out and he's seeing a great multitude of all nations, tribes, and tongues. So brothers and sisters, when you're reading this, this is our destiny. If we're continuing Christ, this is our destiny. This is actually, this is our destiny with God. So we'll be in that number of a great multitude, right? So picture yourself here when it's saying that. 
a great multitude clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. All the st angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered saying to me, who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? And I said to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and wash their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. See that priests, this is our destiny to be the priests of God, right? To serve him. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So the multitudes in heaven singing with their, with their palm branches and clothed in white and singing unto God. That is our destiny. And that's happening now is the group of believers in heaven that are praising and singing unto God. And so we're joining with the saints. We're joining with the angels, everybody praising. We're joining with the elders. We're joining with the, the four living creatures when we're, that's our destiny. That's our call is to join with them even now on earth as it is in heaven. The Bible says, right? The kingdom of heaven is here. It's at hand. It's among us, right? So this is what we want to have on the earth is to have this um, communion between heaven and earth through praise and through worship. And I would love to see, I would love to see, I believe it's coming the day when God's people will worship him in spirit and truth. They'll be holy people. They'll be set apart. They'll be filled with the Holy ghost and they'll worship him this way in full surrender. And we'll feel heaven open and we'll see these incredible things. Um, Revelation chapter 15. Verse three through four, it says this, they sing, oh, sorry, starting in verse one. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone, <clears throat> sorry, for you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. After these things I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And it goes on. So again, I'll read one more uh, passage, but we see the atmosphere of heaven is praise and worship. This is our eternal call. This is our destiny. And we, this is why we were created. And we need to enter into it right now on earth. That this is our, um, our primary ministry is unto God. Our primary ministry is unto God. And then secondary is unto people. Right. And when we're ministering to people, we are ministering unto God. But our primary ministry is to glorify God. So let's go to um, I think we'll do one more. Revelation 19, six through nine. <clears throat> and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. This is our destiny. And to her, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, right, blessed are those who called to the marriage, who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. So we see again, his wife has made herself ready. 
and they sing hallelujah hallelujah for the lord god omnipotent reigns so we are here this is our future destiny is to worship god this is our current destiny our current call to worship god and this is the way that we see heaven opened we see so many breakthroughs in our life we see victories we see prison doors open we see battles won through this place of praise and worship to god it's why you were made it's why you're created it's why i was created and when we step into it and fulfill it then we walk in the fullness of what god has for us so when you go into your prayer closets take time to praise god enter his gates of thanksgiving and then take time to worship god love him adore him he's holy sacrifice your heart to him again afresh i belong to you i am yours and I want to be with you. Let that be a habit in your life where you learn to praise him continually. You learn to worship him. And you understand that this is your job as a priest of God. This is our joy, our great honor, our great joy. And it's our job. It's to minister unto God. This is what we were created to do. And so um, let's all praise and worship God. Um, it was just beautiful. I mean, um, I've... <laughs> I've learned throughout my life to, to learn. Um, there's a little devotional book that I have that says to praise him even in the most trying times. And I've learned like even um, when I wasn't, you know, born again or anything like that, like through the cancer battles and through, you know, any kind of battle I'm going through, it's, it is the most peaceful thing to praise God in tribulation. It is the most peaceful thing because he will bring you the peace that you need. Mm -hmm. so um just like an example when i'm having when i was struggling really bad with eczema i would be in just my whole body's inflamed and i'm like thank you jesus i praise you jesus i praise you god you are so amazing and you just praise him and he will bring you peace in your yeah. suffering so it's it's a beautiful message absolutely praise god yeah i remember times going through i was so 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 sick um they thought my heart might stop. I didn't know that until later, but um, I was very, very sick and uh, in horrible pain. I hadn't slept because I was in so much pain. I was throwing up so many times. And when I throw up, it would like burn coming up. And yeah, I won't go into all the details, but it was horribly painful. And um, a very long time being like that, where just continual pain and suffering. And in the middle of it, it was like, I would just lift my heart up to the Lord and begin to praise him and thank him. And it was so deeply spiritual. So, so deeply, profoundly spiritual. Where it's like his presence and I would just be in tears to love him. I couldn't really even speak a word of praise, but in my heart, just praising him and loving him in the midst of this suffering and just this absolute peace and joy that I'd have in my inner being, even if my body is too sick to get up and jump around or anything it just is there but it has this incredible peace like brooke is talking about this incredible joy and that's through just choosing in the midst of trial in the midst of no matter what's going on to rejoice and to start to thank him and praise him and there's a supernatural joy that happens when we do that it's like fellowshipping with the lord he went through so much suffering it's like fellowshipping with the lord in the midst of suffering and choosing to thank god and choosing to love him um it's absolutely incredible. I would go through that. All that suffering it was all worth it just for those moments of that intense, beautiful relationship, joy. What do you think, Faustine? Uh, I thought this was incredibly useful because um, for the past weeks, the Lord has really put in my heart to learn how to worship because I really don't know. You know, I'm always feeling kind of awkward um, at church, but um, and the last Rima he gave me, the last time he really spoke to me through the Bible was uh, this, the Psalm 100 you spoke about. Wow. You know, I was uh, like in my hour of uh, alone time with him, and I was like, yeah, God, I really want to be your sheep and everything. And, uh, and then I, I thought in my, well, he put in my spirit, yeah, you have to worship me. And then I was like, God, I don't know how to worship. And then I thought, oh, I, have, I have a Bible and there are no worship stuff there. So I opened it and bam, Psalm 100. And um, it was Psalm of Worship written in, in French. And of course, the first one of the first words were like, we are the sheep of his um, flock or something, you know. Um, 
I don't have the translation. So he's like, oh, thank you for the information. And uh, <laughs> basically he was telling me to, to worship him. And uh, I have not really done it. But today, for the first time, I think forever, um, during my prayer time, I sang to him, like I invented songs in my head because my son was sleeping and I could not wake him up. But I was like singing and really with with fervency. I mean, it was, it was really intense and I really enjoyed it. And so the message today is really like on time. So thank you. <laughs> Praise God, sister. Um, so just today you had that time with the Lord of worship, you said? Yeah, when I was singing, yeah, wow. in my head. I love it. I love it. God will put a song in our heart. He'll put a song in us and just to start singing it. That's so often what he does. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I, I have to fight the urge to go and get a recorder. Cause I'm like, Oh, I want to remember this song. You know, I want to remember this song that he's putting in my spirit. But then I'm like, no, but then, then I get out of this place of like, the comedian no like it's this battle do i lord should i go record it <laughs> so i don't forget it uh beautiful sister that's wonderful yeah i think it's just a uh, confirmation um that's something that i've been doing a lot lately is uh praising god with all of my heart mm. and it kind of uh reminds me of a verse for like other people um because i know god uh brought this verse to my mind years ago people honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me Mm -hmm. And I feel that it's true. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they, you know, even worship leaders and stuff that they honor them with their lips, but their heart is far from them. And I think all the verses that you gave us, it's like, um, you got to do it with your heart. Mm -hmm. Anybody could sing a song, but you got to just worship him with your, with all of your heart and soul. And it, it, it really does bring you closer to God and, mm -hmm. When you worship him with all your heart, you just feel his fullness so much, so much more. And, and yeah, a uh, good word. Confirmation. <laughs> yeah. I like how you put that sister. When you worship him with all your heart, you feel his fullness. That's a good way to put yeah. it. Uh, I was trying to find the way to say it. Like you feel that joy or that way. I love that, that way you said it. You feel his fullness. That's exactly right. You feel his fullness. That's, that's a good word. Thank you, sister. Yeah. Karen, did you have anything to share? Are you there? Um, yes, I'm here. Hello. Um, hi. <laughs> okay, so I think um, this message was, like, really precious because, um, like, I just really liked how you talked about us being priests unto god mm -hmm. and like our sacrifice like the sacrifices we offer to god that are pleasing to him like um good works like um being kind you know um offering up our bodies as a living sacrifice those kind of things and also the praise and worship it was just really precious to see how like god like sets us apart you know he wants us to be his special people mm -hmm. like a kingdom mm -hmm. of priests you know and how God just wants us all to himself. You know, he wants us to be holy, set apart, different from the world, a special treasure, you know, those kind of things. They really like, ah, I felt them deep in my heart. And I was like, ah, I really want this. I really want to be like your priest, you know, that kind of thing, you know. And also the praise and worship. It was really enlightening to see like the difference. Because before I used to think they were the same thing, praise and worship. But like, um, how you like differentiated it for us it's really it was really insightful so thank you thank you yeah. praise god i love that sister i love that we're his little we're his precious treasure i love that yes that's exactly what we are we're extremely 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 precious so precious that you know jesus spilled his blood for us there's nothing more precious than the blood of jesus and he spilled it for us and so you think about how precious we are in the sight of God and you think how much he wants us to himself, like you said, and it just reminds us of our worth to God. To God, we are so precious. We are worth it to God because of his great love for us. And it doesn't make sense in our eyes. Like, what is it, you know, but to God, it's like, no, you are my treasure. You are my delight. You are what I rejoice in. And, um, understanding that changes everything. It's like, wow, I can walk with like, 
<clears throat> with buoyancy in my step like i am a treasure to god like really wow and and all these people are too but they don't know it yet you know they haven't entered into it yet but they could and i want them to be to know what it's like to be a treasure of god um to become his treasure so beautiful thank you karen for sharing that diana did you have anything to share Hi. Hi, can you guys? Okay. Um, also, like, like Karen, I also didn't know the difference between praise and worship. I thought it was the same thing. Um, and uh, yesterday, I was um, I was stressing out a little bit because oh. it was getting late, and I had to do all these chores and put my baby to sleep. And um, I started playing a. Uh, uh, worship music i don't know praise me i don't know just worship music but it was um geared towards kids so it was really fun and um i remember i started rejoicing and doing this the thing that you said um like uh remembering the things that he has done for you and thanking him and uh dancing and you know lifting your hands up and i just felt um like all the anxiety went away and i was really happy and i couldn't stop smiling um and then, um, yeah, thank you. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know the difference. And so that, to me, that's helpful because I can, it's, it can be more meaningful when I come before God and know what the, you know, how to interact with him. And so, yeah, I wrote a lot of notes. So thank you. <laughs> oh, praise God. I'm so glad. Uh, sister, that's beautiful. That sounds like God poured on you the oil of gladness. It's like when you begin to praise, it's like there's a moment there. That's what I'm trying to say. There's a moment that things shift. And it's like, wow, suddenly I'm like, everything lifts off. You know, everything falls to the wayside that was maybe if you were frustrated over something or had fear over something or something like that, it all just goes away as soon as you do this, as soon as you begin to praise God. And I, like I said before, I think the reason that so many children of God are, are stuck in a lot of like um, turmoil and fear and anxiety and watching these videos about, you know, is, um, you know, is the uh, so-and-so the mark and, and it's not, but they're caught in all this fear and like all these things going on and they're terrified because now it's the end times and that, you know, the Antichrist might rise and all these things. It's like, okay, if you would just begin to praise God, if you would just begin to love God, if you just begin to focus on God and worship God, <clears throat> all of those things would fall all of that would fall don't be anxious for nothing it's like just let it all fall and just begin to thank god and worship him that even if we're going through the tribulation praise god that he's with us and he's going to carry us and he didn't make a mistake he didn't say oops i didn't mean to have that person go through that tribulation it's like no he's like he has us all here we're born for such a time as this not just to make it through with the gritting of our teeth, but to go through with joy and peace and life and to be a light and to help others that are going to go through it. Like a lot of people are going to have absolute terror in their hearts and fear. And how do we be a light? Is this secret rejoicing in God, thinking and thanking God, praising God, letting the oil of gladness flow out of us. Can you imagine a world in such fear and turmoil and darkness? And then here's God's people singing and rejoicing. What is a bigger testimony, you know, filled with life and love. Um, it's that city on a hill. It's the light of the world. You know, Christ is the light of the world and we're the body of Christ. And so the world can see that's beautiful sister. That's beautiful. I love that. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing Diana. Brianna, did you have anything to share? Um, just relating to like what everyone has been saying. So I noticed when I did the prayer time yesterday, I was thanking God in the beginning and I, it wasn't clicking everything that we spoke about today, of course. Um, but I remember just being so joyful um, as I was thanking him. It's like, I just wanted to continue thanking him. And that really motivated me and helped me to just focus on him more throughout the prayer and less focused on like how I was praying. Um, so I, I witnessed it without realizing it. Yes. Um, and it makes a really big difference. Amen. So, so yeah, everything that like I heard from you tonight, it really does click now and it makes more sense to me. 
Praise God. Lord, I'm so excited to see what you're going to do, Daddy. I can't wait to see. I'm very excited, Lord, to see what you're going to do. You're a good God. You're faithful. You're loving. You're kind. You're generous with us, your children, Lord. I just praise you, God. Thank you for being a good father to every one of us, for meeting with us individually, personally, intimately. Lord, that's so amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We're going to enter this fast, Lord, in complete faith and trust in you that you are going to show yourself mighty on our behalf, that you're going to reveal to us what your will is, because that's your desire, is to reveal your will to us. And you said, if we ask according to your will, it's given to us, Lord. And so please, every person that's doing this fast, Lord, and petitioning you, reveal your will to them, Lord. Reveal your will for their life, um, for their futures, your destiny for them, Lord. Reveal your will to them. Help us all to have incredible amounts of love poured out in our heart, Lord. Lord, help us to be knowing your will, I mean, your love in a new way, God. Help us to know your love in a new way, in a full way, God. That we would know the height, length, depth, width, to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that we could be filled with all the fullness of God. And Lord, I just ask that you would draw us close to yourself, that we would draw closer to you in intimacy and oneness, that each one of us would have um, deep wonderful communion with you in our secret place and throughout the day, Lord. I just praise you for what you're going to do, God. Help us to know your will and to walk in it with joy all of our days, Lord. I thank you um, for what you're going to do as we begin to praise you, Lord. We've set aside time to praise you. And Lord, it's because we love you. We want to praise you. We want to draw close to you. We want to see breakthrough. We want to see a close relationship with you and all these things. So please, Lord, each one of us, help us to be able to offer this sacrifice of praise and that um, we would have revelation of who you are. You draw us close to yourself and that you would be greatly blessed. We love you, God. Thank you for what you're going to do. I bless my sisters in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Love you. Bye. <laughs>